Beat makers and squad, what's good? It's your boy Cheese the producer. I'd like to welcome you to episode four, Out of the Box. Creative approaches to music production. Today, we're tackling advanced tape stop techniques in beat maker two and beat maker three. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So what you hear right here is a sample that I created. And what I want to do is I want to chop this sample up in 16 pieces, okay? So what I want to do is chop it up in 16 pieces and then export the sample itself as 16 separate samples as well. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, uh, refer back to a chopping tutorial uh, for Beatmaker 2, but it is fairly easy. Alright, so now that we've chopped it up, I'm going to open up a keyboard sampler and, and an empty preset. What I'm going to do now is go into settings and mapping, and I'm going to take each one of those 16 samples and map them on the key and give on the keyboard and give them each the same low key, high key, and bass key. And I've fast forwarded this because it's kind of a tedious process. It just takes a little while. Um, but now on the very first sample, which is which has the lowest key, which on this one is C4, I'm actually going to take the low key and drop it all the way down to the bottom to C negative two. And on the highest sample, I'm going to take the high key and and bring it all the way up to the highest pitch, which is G8. Okay, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Now, back in this screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the legato on, which will automatically make the polyphony one, and I'm going to bring the glide time up. So I brought the glide time up to about 15 to 20 milliseconds here, which actually is a mistake because um, it'll make the the pitch drop too fast, but I just want you to hear what happens when the glide time is short. So let's check it out. Uh, also, I'm going to um, take the volume envelope and drop the release to about two milliseconds. So that way, when I lift my finger off the key, it doesn't just stop immediately and cause a click. Now, I created a, a, a MIDI track when I chopped the sample before and I just re-imported it. So um, the drum machine, however, is a few octaves lower than where I am. So I'm literally just gonna transpose that MIDI information up and let's uh, make sure the tempo is correct. All right, and we are good to go at this point. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in some notes below each one of these notes that I have here. So right now what you can hear is it's dropping a couple octaves, three octaves to be exact, but really quickly. So I'm gonna bring it up to see if that makes a difference in the sound. As you can see, it's really not making that much of a difference in the sound. Again, here it is dropping just one octave and it still sounds bad, right? So what I'm gonna do is go back into the settings of the keyboard sampler. And we're gonna change that legato value. Now, I turned it down, I don't know why, but I'm actually gonna turn it up, way up, okay? About 290, about 300, see how it works. Let's check it out. Now you kind of have like that growth speed um, effect that um, that is in uh, FL Studio or like the one that's in Cubase's as well. Now see, I, I increase the time to 816, so it's a little too much. So I'm dropping back down to about 250 around there. Okay, and you can hear that the tape stop is working well. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm just tape stopping each chop. Um, that I created. So now we know what it sounds like when we drop the pitch. What if we increase the pitch? Now we have a whole different effect, okay? So yeah, we could do a tape stop, but we could do like a rev up too. And we could do it in the middle of the sample because each piece of the sample is chopped. And you can literally tape stop or rev up each part. So now we're in Beatmaker 3. And pretty much I've done the same thing as far as mapping with the sample. Each sample has a key. Okay, I've chopped the sample up in here. Um, and 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the legato on. You can see the glide time is at 100 milliseconds. I think I'm gonna bring it up to about uh, 125 milliseconds or something. Um, <clears throat> just to give it a different value. But you can, you know, experiment with these values. Now, in the mapping section, what I'm going to do is, on the bottom key, I'm going to do the same exact thing I did before. On the bottom key, I'm going to drop it all the way down to the bottom value so we can do a pitch, uh, so we can do a tape stop. All right? So here I have the MIDI set up. And notice, each MIDI note is a, is a quarter note. Okay, and I'm putting in tape stops on the second eighth note of each quarter note. Because when you put it on the first one, it makes it sound crazy. Check, as you'll hear right here. See? So you don't want the, you don't want it on the first part. You want it on the second eighth note, second half. So you can hear those last two sounding kind of crazy. I think it's because the pitch is kind of far and 125 milliseconds is really not enough to get a good pitch bend like it's moving too fast but anyway let's go back and let's turn let's uh take the highest key and let's make its highest let's take the highest sample and make its highest key all the way to the top so we can do a rev up all right so, if I can ever choose the right icon, see I'm failing here miserably. <laughs> I draw in a note, a couple notes above the actual, um, and then we have the same type of effect once again. So we got a rev up, and we got a tape stop, a beat maker two, and a beat maker three, and it's really just that simple. All right, so let's say we want to use a live stretch and change the tempo or the pitch of a sample. Guess what? It still works. Next time on Out of the Box. We're gonna make 808s that knock. I'll catch y'all next week. It's your boy Cheese the Producer, repping for Beatmakers and Squad, and I'm signing off.